Hi guys, welcome back to Embryology with Anatop. In our last lesson, we discussed about the clinical anomalies associated with gametogenesis. Well, in today's lesson, we will be talking about fertilization. So, let's get started. For species to multiply, they have to procreate and for humans to do so, fertilization has to occur. So, what is fertilization? During sexual intercourse between a sexually active male and female, millions of sperm is released by the male into the vagina of the female. The process by which the egg released by the female fuses with the sperm released by the male to form a zygote is called fertilization. Fusion of these gametes usually occur in the ampulla region of the uterine tube. Now of the 200 to 300 million spermatozoa deposited in the vagina, only 1% of sperm deposited enters the cervix, where they may survive for many hours and only about 300 to 500 reaches the site of fertilization. Movement of sperm from the cervix to the oviduct requires a minimum of 2 to 7 hours and is accomplished primarily by their own propulsion as well as movements of fluids created by uterine cilia. After reaching the isthmus of the uterine tube, sperm become less motile and cease their migration. At ovulation, the secondary oocyte is expelled from the ovarian follicle into the funnel-shaped infundibulum of the uterine tube by sweeping action of the fimbriae. Now, once the oocyte passes into the ampulla of the tube via peristalsis, sperm again becomes mutile because of chemoattractants produced by the cumulus cells surrounding the egg and they swim to the ampulla of the uterine tube where fertilization usually occurs. Spermatozoa must undergo two processes before it is able to fertilize an oocyte and these processes are capacitation and acrosome reaction. Capacitation is a process whereby glycoprotein coats and seminal plasma proteins are removed from the plasma membrane that overlies the acrosomal region of the spermatozoa. Only capacitated sperm can pass through the corona cells. This process lasts 7 hours in humans. Now, acrosome reaction occurs after the sperm binds to the zona pellucida. It involves the release of acrosine and hyaluronase enzymes from the acrosome. This process leads to the penetration of the zona pellucida by the sperm. Penetration by the sperm leads to a change in the properties of the zona pellucida, making it impermeable to other sperms. This process is called zona reaction. Once the sperm penetrates the zona pellucida, it then passes through the vitelline layer of the oocyte. The cell membranes of the oocyte and sperm then fuse and break down at the area of the effusion. Once the sperm enters the cytoplasm of the oocyte, the sperm pronucleus and the oocyte pronucleus fuse to form the zygote. Some clinical correlates associated with fertilization include infertility, dyspermy, and triploidy. Infertility is a problem affecting about 15% to 30% of couples. Males with less than 20 million sperm per male per total ejaculate are more likely to be infertile. In women, Infertility may be due to fallopian tube blockage, tubal infection, and uterine fibroids, among others. Usually, only one sperm penetrates the oocyte and fertilizes it. Two sperms may participate in fertilization during an abnormal process known as dyspermy, resulting in a zygote with an extra set of chromosomes leading to triploid conceptions. That'll be all for now guys. Now if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and leave us a comment. 
In our next video, we will be talking about the reproductive cycle. Thank you.